Hey everyone, this is Dr. Coffins. Welcome to lab. This is our first experiment of the semester on page three. By now you would have taken your safety video and safety quiz and you'd be ready to hop in your gloves, goggles, apron, post toed shoes and get into lab for the very first time. And our first lab is about matter. And matter really has four categories um, total, um, two different kind of main categories, but if you're a pure substance, you're gonna be an element on the periodic table. Unfortunately, you have 118 choices, but it's either gonna match or it's not. To be a compound, you're gonna have multiple elements together and uh, it's gonna look the same. So unless you know what elements and compounds look like from your vast knowledge of all compounds that exist, sometimes that's gonna to be tough. The reason it's gonna to be tough is because homogeneous mixtures also look the same and unless you have an ingredient label to help you out, definitely gonna be a tough competition between those two on who's who. Even sometimes elements can be tough because maybe you don't know the difference between some compounds and elements by just looking at them. There are two types of mixtures. Again, the homogeneous, the one that looks the same throughout, left, right, top, bottom, up, and down, and so forth. Um, heterogeneous looks different. Definitely the easiest of the four. If you see a difference, it's gonna be heterogeneous, just like wood grain, you see the darkness and lightness, or marble tables, you see a darkness and lightness. Those are very easy uh, compared to all others. The difficulty we have is those three can look the same, and if you don't have a little bit of knowledge about everything in the world, it's definitely gonna be a tough uh, decision to make. And that's the first decision we get to make with several examples at the bottom. So we're gonna look at some samples here in lab um, and see if we can narrow down our choices, and then we're gonna reveal the answers and see how well you did on your own. So as we go across these eight items, you can just number them one through eight if you want. Um, go ahead and give your prediction, maybe circle it lightly because you may or may not know the answer. And then we'll have a justification, definitely um, using some of the ideas above, but maybe uh, flipping over the card and checking the answer might be the best way for that as well. So let's look at number one first. As we look at number one, we definitely can see that there's some darkness and lightness. So we see some of that gray versus that gold kind of color, so definitely two different things that should help with that one. Let's try number two. Number two looks like white dust, white powder. You have to think to yourself, because it doesn't look different, does it look like an element I've ever seen before? Does it look like compounds I've ever seen before? Um, you know, what could it be? Number three, different colored dust. So now we have a yellow dust versus a white dust. So again, if this is an element you've seen before, great. If not, it's a tough call. Could be a mixture that looks the same. Uh, could be a compound. That's a tough call again. Number four, some green fluid. So this green solution looks the same throughout. If it has water and something else, that could be a uh, good example of a homogeneous mixture. Um, could be an element if you've ever seen one like that. Those are kind of things to think about. Definitely doesn't look different, so it's not heterogeneous. Number five, we have very securely in place this bright silver liquid. Don't worry about the glass beads or the container. That's just to keep it from tipping over and breaking. Uh, but this is a very recognizable uh, element for most. Number six. Well, we definitely have some clear fluid, but also some stuff at the bottom. Notice it does kind of particulate in there. We definitely see a difference. This is going to be an easier guess than all the others. Number seven looks empty, but so does the room. And the room's full of air, and so is this. So hopefully you remember what we talked about in class for things like air. And lastly, we have number eight, uh, some kind of reddish orange dust. Kind of looks like rust or something of that nature. Um, but again, think, is it an element I've ever seen before? Definitely doesn't look different. So compounds, homogeneous mixtures, elements always gonna be a tough call. So I'll give you a minute to think about it. Circle your answers and we'll show you the real answer. All right, so let's look at number one. Definitely heterogeneous matter. Definitely looks different. In this case, we have a mixture of copper and chromium. 
Number two, this white dust. Well, it's not methamphetamine. This one is citric acid. This is what makes your candy sour. It's a big compound. Number three, the yellow dust. If we'd open it, you could probably smell it and figure it out pretty quickly. This is the element sulfur. Would smell like a rotten egg. Number four was that kind of green solution or fluid. This is a homogeneous mixture of water and some nickel nitrate that's mixed in. All solutions, uh, great synonym for homogeneous mixture. Any kind of number would give that away on a bottle. Uh, this one definitely the easiest of the bunch, silver fluid, or at least silver liquid in this case, uh, elemental mercury. Number six, definitely saw a difference. This is just a mixture of mineral oil and table salt. You can see a difference, heterogeneous. Number seven, we already talked about air. Air is a great example of a mixture that you can't see the difference. It all looks clear. Um, mostly nitrogen and oxygen along with other trace elements. Um, but still looks the same, mixed together. And lastly, red dust is, sure enough, iron oxide rust, a compound between iron and oxygen. Now let's move on to the next section. So our first example today will be uh, sublimation of iodine. We're going to do this inside the fume hood because of the vapors that are produced. It smells much like a hospital. What we're going to notice pretty quickly though is iodine that we're going to find as a solid. And when you heat it up, it's going to skip a liquid phase and go straight to a gas through a process called sublimation. And because that's reversible through deposition, that's a great example for a physical change and it's our only physical change of this lab to show. So in order for this to work, we're going to need some iodine and we're going to need our beaker. We're going to need a evaporating dish full of ice as a lid. And then we have our Bunsen burner in order to heat it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some iodine and get back to you. All right, here's our iodine. Notice it looks like uh, glitter, very toxic glitter though. So I'm gonna put this in the beaker. I'm going to place our lid on top, full of ice, perfect fit, and then let it cook. So notice, Nothing happens yet, but as we zoom in and start to look at those crystals that are now getting much warmer, we're going to start to see some color changes. So notice that deep kind of purple magenta color starting to form. So as you look at your observations, we definitely saw that gray glitter at first, but now we see that nice deep purple kind of color starting to form. This process here is sublimation. Notice we don't see any liquid iodine. We only see that uh, solid turning into a vapor in the middle of that beaker. As we look a little bit lower underneath the beaker, we can start to see it turning a little bit gray. The very cold surface of our evaporating dish full of ice is going to start to collect the iodine underneath and we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. So here about halfway through notice we're starting to grow some crystals on the side starting to grow some even prettier crystals up top and we're going to keep going until this beaker goes completely clear for a second time. So it looks like we're about done we're going to turn off the heat let it cool down just a little bit and then check out our crystals underneath. So with ice entered, it's cool enough. As we lift it up, we can start to see the crystals growing on the edge, just like where they looked uh, originally. And that's because it's still iodine before and after. So notice all we've really done is purified the iodine through sublimation and then deposition on that cold surface. So notice with the cleanup of this, very similar to that dust we have, so much so that I'm just going to put it straight back into the container. And that's that. So in this next lab, we're going to do our first chemical change. Just remember those are ones that can't go backwards, and we're trying to prove that. So this one we're going to take uh, table sugar, we're going to observe it, sulfuric acid, we're going to observe the reaction that they have together what it looks like after, and then think about could you go backwards to the sugar that we started with. 
So in order for this, I'm going to add a scoop of sugar and then an equal amount of sulfuric acid and mimic what our stomach does with sugar, but just in a much faster uh, time period. So here's our sugar, one scoop, about five mils, doesn't have to be perfect. And then our sulfuric acid. We're going to use equal amounts, it's pretty syrupy. This is concentrated sulfuric acid, it's as bad as it gets. And we're going to add some of it. So notice now, just upon adding, starting to turn dark, some yellow, starting to discolor the sugar, much like it would in our stomach with hydrochloric acid. As we stir it, notice much, much darker. So we're gonna let this sit a few minutes and come back when there's a bigger change. All right, so we're starting to see a little bit of growth at the bottom. Notice it's starting to foam a little bit. And now it's starting to bubble. This is what we're observing when we uh, are looking at that carbon solid that's starting to form. And notice now it's getting ready to take off. Starting to build up some steam. Starting to smell like burnt cookies in the oven. You can probably hear the sizzling now. Start to see the smoke coming out of the tube. It's going to represent kind of what you would see on 4th of July, kind of like one of those little snakes. What we're seeing here is it's building up some steam in between and pushing it out the test tube. So again, as you look at a lot of these examples, think of, could we go backwards to that uh, white solid in the beginning? Definitely very different now. So notice here, minutes later, still cooking, still very hot. Uh, very porous, dark uh, charcoal looking carbon that remains. Very smelly. All right, moving on to part B. We're going to show formation of a gas, different from the change in color and texture of the last one. So we're gonna add calcium metal to hydrochloric acid, same acid that eats cement off of bricks and see what happens. So to do this, we're going to take a test tube. We're going to add some hydrochloric acid first. And then we're going to add some calcium metal. It doesn't like oxygen very well. It's starting to corrode a little bit, but it's still going to do the trick. Let's find a big chunk and see what happens. So watch the bottom of the tube. Again, here's the calcium metal before. We're worried about the reaction and after. So notice a tremendous amount of bubbles. Down there it's gonna get pretty warm. Right now our calcium metal and hydrochloric acid are turning into calcium chloride in the bottom. Definitely lots of heat being produced, lots of bubbles being produced, lots of mess being made. Every once in a while you can see our calcium metal floating up towards the top, catching all that air. And notice much smaller than it once was. We'll come back to it after it's finished. All right, so we waited a few minutes and notice now, uh, it looks very clear. Looks almost as if it is like water, but now it's a solution of calcium chloride and water. All right, in part C, um, we're still looking for is it reversible or not. We're gonna take lead nitrate, make a solution with water, potassium dichromate, make a solution with water, and then mix them together and think about could they be reversed. So let's uh, make these solutions first. I'll do that by adding um, some water to each of those beakers, 20 mils each, and then add some of that compound and stir it up to be homogeneous. So we'll be back then. 
All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of the lead nitrate, add it to our water. Notice it's just a kind of white powder. Do the same thing with potassium dichromate. Add it to a little bit of water, and then we'll stir it up. All right, be back in a bit. All right, so we have two homogeneous solutions. And notice in our lead nitrate, we want to record that it stayed clear like water. And our potassium dichromate solution, which was an orange powder, made a orange solution. So now we need to observe the reaction and think about, could we go backwards to that white powder, that dichromate solution, if the water were evaporated? So I'm going to take this one, which is a little milky. That's because our water may not be completely distilled. And then we're going to very slowly pour this orange solution down the wall and let it join forces. Notice as soon as they mix, we get that bright yellow color. So again, think, could it go backwards or not? All right, last uh, experiment, uh, part D. We're going to look for some heat and light. We're going to take magnesium ribbon and light it like a firework. It's going to react with oxygen and see again the magnesium before, what happens during and then think about, could we go backwards to that original magnesium? So here's our magnesium. Small little gray metallic piece of metal. And then I'm going to light it like a firework. And notice, very bright, very intense amount of heat, almost like a welder. And what remains is something that looks kind of solid, but not. So again, look at the magnesium oxide we just saw, kind of white and kind of dusty at this point. And then think, could you go back to that original magnesium that we started with? And that's the end of this experiment. We'll jump to uh, talking about the questions next. So a lot of these examples on the back page, page seven, is to get you familiar with recognizing types of matter. So again, we saw error earlier. Think about, is that an element, compound, a mixture that looks the same or a mixture that looks different? A wood cabinet, the metal hinges, the wood doors, the wood grain, try to pick a choice there. The lab book itself has the plastic coil, the spiral itself, the pages, the different colors, inks. Um, distilled water, um, distilled is a process where you uh, boil it and recover it. So think about water in that form. Uh, 3M, hydrochloric acid, that just means that a certain amount has been mixed with water. Um, so think about that idea. Solid lead dichromate, we saw that is our product from our last experiment, that bright yellow uh, solid that was made. This would be if it were collected. A calcium chloride solution, that was that clear solution after our calcium was created, uh, or at least in this case, uh, dissolved. Magnesium metal, uh, what we had right before we burnt it. Table sugar, straight out of the box, uh, although a lot harder to find nowadays. Um, and then concentrated sulfuric acid was that syrupy liquid that we added to it. As we switch gears to the bottom, notice down here we're asking, is it reversible? Melting, freezing, vaporizing, condensing, sublimation, deposition, or is it something that's irreversible, like a chemical change? So when you break a window with a baseball, is it still a window? When a ship rusts, can it ever unrust? If blue jeans are bleached, can they ever be unbleached? If sugar is added to tea, could you remove the water and get the sugar back? If popsicles are frozen, can they ever be uh, melted? If a tire goes flat, can you ever air it back up? If dew disappears in the morning, can it reappear at night? If a marshmallow is burnt, can you ever unburn it? If hail dents your car hood, can it ever be undented? And then if coal is burnt in a power plant, could you ever get the coal back? Those are the ideas that will help you understand this chapter more. And that's it for this lab.